this is episode 152 of Play PSVR 2, the podcast, and we don't have time for jokes. We got to get into it, Alex. We're talking about the biggest news since Resident Evil, probably the PC adapter for the PSVR 2. We have a Retropolis 2 review. We've got fan shout outs. There's probably going to be surprises that neither of us even know because our discussion is that good. Alex, are you ready? Are you locked and loaded? Uh, I believe the word would be Blamu. I'm Blamu. I'm locked and loaded, baby. I am ready. I've played Adam. I haven't played any PSVR this week. I've played PC VR this week, and I'm I'm here to talk about that this week. Oh hot dang! Oh hot dang! Well, we're gonna get into it, but first we gotta cover our gamer juice. And Alex, I'm gonna I got a little special one for you. It's a special evening. It's a special event. So I'm making a little cocktail. So first thing you gotta have your little Smirnoff. I do blue raspberry vodka, all right? So what we're going for, it's summertime. It's time for the beach. We love it. This stuff is smelly. So you got to have a little bit of the blue raspberry vodka. Then you hit yourself with some very lemony, very citric blue raspberry lemonade. Hit that in there. Is that what that is? That looks like Gatorade. No, nope, no. Nope. Gatorade it's, in the orange It's juice? blue raspberry. Is blue raspberry. And then... What you do is you got to get yourself a little little shark here, all right? And that's full of grenadine. And then he, no, 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 and he goes in. And then there we go. You got yourself a nice little cocktail. It's got a little bit of blood. It's got a little bit of shark, and it's got a whole lot of lemonade. So I'm going to pour this in here, sip it. It's got to taste good, right? It's a whole lot of sugar. It's a whole lot. Of... <laughs> it looks so gross coming out. It's like all... <laughs> it looks like gray sludge. <laughs> I mean, I'm, everything sounds like it might taste good. Yeah, Although, it's fantastic. Is the red... It's fantastic. It, it's nice. Is the and... red stuff what's on, on that bottle there next to you? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's the grenadine. It's just like... Uh, what is grenadine? It's like... Uh, I think it's, ch it's cherry or strawberry, and it's just like strawberry sugar, essentially. It so, looks like a soy sauce, like like duck sauce or something. Yeah, yeah, the front of it definitely <laughs> does. But no, it's a definitely, I forgot if it's cherry. I think it's strawberry, though. But yeah, it's just like almost, you know, the snow cone mix? It's like snow cone mix. Oh, so is it like really, I guess, that looks really like Really sweet. Good. So this is sweet. It's a little tangy. Dude, it's good. Um, I mean, I knew it would be good. You're right. That does so disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't care. It's good. And you like that? What I did with the little shark? You like that? Yeah, it's but it's yeah because it doesn't look gray in the in the thing when you pour it. It makes it gray. It's because it, it starts to mix it together. But oh, okay, okay. My yeah, game of juice this a, week. Yeah, go ahead. That what's yours? Um, just Coke Zero with a big old big big spherical ice cube wow nice normally i'm drinking like bourbon out of this i don't i can't i'm not gonna drink bourbon adam we got a podcast to record that's bullcrap okay alex pc adapter it's out it's out now we've had it two days we'll start yeah. with your i think your experience has gone smoother than mine so how about we start off on a good foot and let you present what were your first impressions how how did setup go and quickly like what do you think about it yeah, I mean, it was a, a lot of mystery into what issues I have with the PCVR setup. I will say, out of the gate, um, you know, when they launched, you know, every store was sold out. Best Buy was sold out. Amazon was sold out. Everybody was sold out. And I thought, crap, this is going to be another thing where I wait like a month to get this. Um, then I saw on Reddit, somebody was like, well, they still have them on the PlayStation Direct. So I ordered one thinking like, you know, it'll probably take a month for them to get them back in stock and ship it. But I'll at least put myself on the list. <laughs> and then the next day, it came in the mail. So... Um, that was pretty nice. I wasn't expecting to get it the day after it came out and I got it the day after it came out. Um, you know, in anticipation of it, looking for links to buy it, I was reading people's thoughts and stuff. Um, a lot of positive initial reactions, uh, coming out of people, uh, that had tried it, but the things I kept hearing was like, make sure you have a display port cable around, which every monitor I've bought in the past 10 years comes with a display port cable. So I got like extras of those lying around. Um, and Everybody said, like, hey, be careful. Your Bluetooth might not work, uh, um, whatever Bluetooth adapter you have. I recently just had to upgrade the Wi-Fi on my computer, uh, and it came with a Bluetooth adapter, so that's what I've been using, and it works fine. But I bought a Bluetooth adapter just in case. Um, bought one of the ones that people officially recommend, and there's the Asus 
UBT 500, something like that. Um, and so I, I have that, I have that in case it doesn't work. Uh, but yeah, the, the initial setup is I downloaded the PlayStation VR app, um, got Steam and downloaded Steam VR. And you plug in, let's see, I don't know in front of me, I should have had it, it's over there. It, it's funny, Adam, it takes the PSVR 2 and turns it into the PSVR 1 with like the breakout box and all that crap. Um, so it it was pretty easy to set up though. You plug everything in, get it to go. The PlayStation app kind of walks you through most everything. I didn't really have many issues getting things connected. And before I knew it, I was like, literally before I knew it, I was playing Serious Sam in VR and it was working seamlessly and I was having a great time and the buttons were working. It wasn't weird mapping issues or anything. Um, the only downside of my first experience was when I turned off PlayStation app and uh, tried to turn off Steam, my computer just crashed, crashed hard, big time crash. And so I think that's more of an issue of my computer getting too hot or something, but uh, just... This is the kind of stuff you run into when you start playing games on computers. Is if things aren't just right, you run into problems. Well, good for you. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you know, up yours. The more realistic, in my opinion, what you're going to run into is one. I do have to give you credit, Alex. You told me about the. Uh, I was traveling when it came out, and I missed a lot of the Reddit and stuff. You did warn me about the Bluetooth adapter, which I did have to purchase. The display port cable which i did not have so i had to purchase that and i agree on paper this is very easy and straightforward right the issues is on paper so you need all these additional things which i mean granted my computer is about two years old but when i bought it it was like a thousand dollars like it's not like a chump computer i got bought off freaking walmart and it was like the lowest spec gaming computer i could buy it was like a good computer still Bluetooth wouldn't work. I tried. I had to run out and get that. The The cable I bought, it's a gaming monitor, and it didn't have a DisplayPort cable. So I don't know what's up with that. But either way, did not work. And then, so I hooked all that crap up. Then the biggest issue I came to was with Bluetooth. I've had so many issues where, I first, it wouldn't recognize the controllers. It recognized the left one, but it, it wouldn't necessarily recognize the right one. And then it forgot them. And then even still, now it's a little better. But initially, when it paired with the left one, it wasn't able to pair with the right one simultaneously. So it kept switching off, which obviously you, you can't use it that way. And then even the PlayStation app was like, dude, pair them both. And I'm like, I can't. I ran into an issue where um, my PS5, when I click my main buttons on my controllers, it turns the PS5 on. But even though I'm in a different room and I'm on my computer and that's paired to my computer, when I turn the main power button on the controller on, my PS5 turns on. I can't figure out how to turn that off without doing a ton of work. So that to make this work, I have to unplug my PS5, which I think is ridiculous. The dual sense doesn't work unless you plug it directly in your computer. And even then, it's all wonky. I can't use Bluetooth at all with my computer on this. Now, I, I've tried it. I can use it when I play Pal World on Steam, or I can use it for headphones. I can use it for keyboards. I can use it for everything else. But when it comes to playing PSVR 2 with the Sense controllers, it won't work. I can't get it to work. So I have to connect the controllers, which obviously is an issue. Essentially, every step of the way, I've had problems, and I still can't figure it out. I've yet to use the Dual Sense controller, or the Sense controllers, rather, to play VR. I can't do it. So, mine is a bit more of a painful method. Glad yours, I guess, is up and running. I don't know what it is. I'm very quickly running out of juice and stamina and confidence and caring, if I'm being quite honest. Um, I'm like, I'm almost done with it. Like, it, if it's going to take me an hour just to get it running to play a game, not worth it. So, there we go. First impression. And I'm not the only one with these issues. I actually went and looked because I was like, is it me? It's not just me, dog. No, it's not just you. I mean, so I have I have like my main computer, but then I have one that I bought a while back that I really use that um, is also kind of VR capable. I, I think I really bought it so that I could have a VR computer. Um, and so I set my PSVR 2 up on that. 
and I started running into issues like you. It didn't have a built-in Bluetooth adapter, so I had to use a USB Bluetooth adapter. That was having issues connecting. Um, I thought that maybe it had been connecting to my PlayStation or something like that. I could get like one controller connected, but not the other. It wasn't kicking the other off though, like yours. It it was just a whole host of messes. But then I restarted my computer entirely, and uh, it seemed like everything fixed. Everything was fixed that way. Um, and I played Half Life Alex on it earlier today, and it was awesome. So, yeah, it's disappointing. Although this is this is the thing that I. I think people tried to people in the know with PC VR tried to warn PlayStation VR people about is that playing games on PC is a pain in the ass. Even if you get things working consistently, it's always like a pain in the ass. It's always like, oh, you got to tweak that thing, or oh, is that adapter compatible? Oh, is this you got this certain cord for <laughs> for your display? You know, there's there's so many more variables at play because you have such a variety uh, of setups that you're working with, and so. I mean, I'm running into that now. Like, like usually with the Dual Sense, right? If we were to play a game on PS5, you got a controller that works with it. You plug it into PS5, you're done. That's all you got to think about. Here, it's like, oh, do I have updated drivers for this controller? Is it communicating on Wi-Fi? Is it communicating on Bluetooth? Can I just plug it in instead? Like all this stuff. Yeah, we'll we'll get into it more a little bit later. The issues I had with the Dual Sense trying to get stuff up and running, but it's just it's such a pain. And what we saw, uh, what we saw with one of the games was like. Oh, this game was designed for you know computers ten years ago, and so they they didn't even believe that there was going to be a dual sense controller, so it can't handle a dual sense controller. Stuff like that. It's just it's maddening. It's PC PC nuisances, but hopefully some of the games out there are worth that trouble. Like I, like I think Half Life Alex is. A question: Is thirty percent alcohol? Is that a lot? Yeah, it's. So that's, I, I essentially a, chugged two glasses of my concoction here and it uh I feel like <laughs> I'm not buzzed, but I feel something in my head. So it uh maybe I shouldn't have done that. Anyhow, Alex, I'm gonna move so we have enough time for this review. I've been waiting to just launch into this one is Retropolis 2. I'm ready to share my thoughts. It's a game I think I don't know, you you might uh, you might like, but I think we need to enter the court to begin. All right, let's break into the review for Retropolis 2. All right, Rise Court is in session, baby. Gaming Court is in session specifically. I am your honorable judge, and I will bring fire and brimstone upon the game in question, which is Retropolis 2, Never Say Goodbye. Alex, in the first account of Cows Go, let's dissect the evidence. Alex, knock, knock. Who's there? Cows Go. Cows Go who? No, Alex, Cows Go Moo! Listen, that joke was funnier than every joke in Retropolis 2. Never say goodbye. That, although admittedly, uh, this game is supposed to be humorous, but it's one of those games that's intended to be funny, but it's not funny, Alex. Trover saves the universe? Now that's funny. Accounting Plus? All right, you actually laugh in that game. This, this, uh, that never made me laugh. And not even close. Rather, it was full of humor cliches. So, in my opinion, that's an issue. Because the entire game is full of cliches. And it was, in my opinion, lack of originality that really hampered it too. Now, to kind of expound on that, the theme is kind of like a film noir, which admittedly has not been done on PSVR 2 yet, but that same theme is in like TV shows and movies, and it used those same cliches. So in that way... It's not original. That's what I mean by that. So not that it's not in, it's like there's all, there's a ton of games in PSVR 2 and that theme, no, but they're just ripping off other media that it's not original to me. Uh, they're also, <laughs> we've never gotten a chance to play Retropolis 1. This is a direct sequel and it's a, it's an extended plot, which admittedly is cool. I like that, 
but I don't know what happened in Metropolis 1. Now, admittedly, you can piece together what happened as you go throughout the game, but in the beginning, you're going to be like, what the heck is happening here? You have no idea. So that's not a game changer, but a little bit annoying. But those things, the lack of an originality, the fact that it's not funny, the fact that you don't know what happened in Metropolis 1 and will never get the chance to play it, on those charges... Because of, or I guess on the the charge of, Cal's go, I do find you guilty. Any quick questions, Alex? You say film noir, like black and white stuff, or do you mean the more like uh, steampunk or something like that? Like, is it a crime? It, it's mystery? like, yeah, it is a crime mystery. And it is like film noir, but it's not black and white. It's in okay, color, okay. but it has that same like, you know, people are smoking cigars and it's like 1950s okay. or whatever, yeah. uh, which I mean, it is kind of like a, a, a cool theme, right? But it's just they ripped off everything from that, from TV and movies that I've seen in that same genre. And uh, so that you said there's a lot of jokes. Um, it's like, is it a really story driven game? So like if the humor doesn't land, that affects the quality of the game. I don't think it necessarily affects, uh, affects the quality, but it is very plot-driven, almost exclusively. Plot and puzzle is what this game is. And so you're solving puzzles to progress the plot. There's been a, a murder or, or a kidnapping, rather, excuse me, and you are a detective having to go through and figure out kind of what happened. And uh, the, the main suspect or the main person you're chasing rather who's been supposedly kidnapped as your lover and you know all this stuff and again it connects to the first game where there's already that background and context do since you didn't play the first game do you feel lost at all in the beginning i did a little but you from context clues you can piece it together okay okay i guess i i a lot of times i can jump into the middle of stuff and not worry about it too much okay it's good to hear that at least that you don't have to have played Retropolis 1. Maybe you can play that as a prequel to Retropolis 2. But yeah, let's go. Let's get into the next point then, Adam. There it is. So next on the three accounts of It's Coming, Alex, what is always coming but never arrives? What, Adam? Tomorrow, you freaking pervert. I hate you. I know what you were thinking. See, that riddle or puzzle, if you will, was not good. But Retropolis 2's puzzles are much better than that. That's where this game really shines. Uh, fantastic puzzles. They are very doable, but they're still challenging. Never did I feel completely lost or like I don't stand a chance. And even if you are like you're stumped, but they give you the environment and they, they give you enough clues that you're like, I can do it. So it keeps you motivated to keep pushing through even when you get stumped. They have that balance very well, which a lot of puzzle games do not. Even if you are stumped and you can't figure out what to do, there is an actual guide in the game, like a walkthrough. So I only used it like three times. I didn't obviously, like I said, I felt motivated to continue to learn and try to like figure them out because it wasn't that difficult. But so, but it's really nice to have the guide right there. You didn't need to go to freaking YouTube and watch a dude play a full walkthrough and figure out all this crap. It was right there for you. Very user friendly, very player friendly. And they obviously, that I like. They played games, they knew what would make this a fantastic experience for the user, and they executed on it. It was very well done. So um, the game works well. There are no glitches. I've had, I had no problems whatsoever. The world building in the game in terms of character development and plot development and things were very well done. Good advancement of the plot. The pacing was good. All of that was very, very well done. So on the three accounts of it's coming, I find you. Guilty. I mean, that all sounds positive. It's When you say puzzle, do you mean something almost like, you know how, I don't even know if Resident Evil is the best example, but like Resident Evil will have puzzles and it's like, you got to try to figure out what's going on. Um, oh, there's some obscure thing, go move forward. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to like these set pieces and it's like, 
little sliding block puzzles or something like that. I I don't I don't know I don't know the best way to ask yeah, the yeah. question. What what types it, of puzzles? I guess. Yeah, yeah it's a combination. So okay. you may be stuck in a, a jail cell and you have to figure out how do I get the keys on the other side? Oh, okay. So it's like oh, environmental oh, this, type this really. guy has a Roomba stuck on, you know, on his butt. You take the Roomba out, but oh wait, you got to figure out how do I charge the Roomba? Oh, now you've charged the Roomba. And then, oh, how do I get the Roomba to go over there? Or, or, you know, knock, how do I knock the keys off the wall onto the ground and then send the Roomba over there to suck them up and then get the Roomba to come back and then grab the keys from the Roomba, stuff like that. So you're stationary. It is not a, like, you're moving around like Resident Evil type of game. You're typically stationary in a spot and you're, it's almost like a point and click game. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to ask. Like, it sounds like a point and click adventure in VR. Now, how does that work in VR? Because I've always... It seems like that could be re done really well, but I don't know that I've played it like a true point and click adventure type game in VR yet. Yeah, it I mean, obviously we all love super high action and running around and stress and stuff. This obviously isn't that, but I think it worked pretty well. When that is your expectation and again the puzzles were engaging enough, you never felt lost and you the pacing of the plot was such that you wanted to solve it so you could get to the next point in the plot or figure out what happens next so i think it was well done it, i i wouldn't say that it was like um you know it, it was good it was good um probably i can't think of any other game really like that point and click adventure game sure there has been and i just can't remember off the top of my head that's been in psvr but I mean, it was well done. I mean, we've had we've had some. I know on PSVR one. I'm trying to think on PSVR two, what it would be. Um, so then, is it like uh, shoot? What's the word? I just the the question just escaped me. Great. Well, you can ask it next time. How about that? Oh, is it teleportation? Is it teleportation movement from point to point? Uh, you can have. I believe a little of both. I finished it now for like two weeks. So I'm having to remember. <laughs> so it, it's definitely teleportation, but I feel maybe it's only teleportation. Oh, man. Well, I played 10 hours of it and look, that boom, gone. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, I feel like I free locomoted it, but it's it's limited, right? Like it's yeah. not like you can go anywhere. It's very kind of like narrow, but... I think I teleported the whole time, but that's why I'm thinking I teleported because that's the default, but mm -hmm. you might be able to locomote. All right, let's go to the next point, Adam. All right, finally on the single count of get off. Alex, how do you get a Polish guy with one arm to get off a tree? I don't know, Adam, how? You wave at him. Similarly, something is off with retropolis 2 and it's not that the game is bad at all i just gave you a bunch of things it really excelled in and how it was engaging and and how it was good so i don't don't want to say like it's bad it does work well but and there's even a for me you know i care about the price it's a great cost to time ratio if i got 10 hours maybe a little more out of this game and it's only 25 dollars. that's fantastic so Granted, although it was cliche, it did at least have a theme, it had the world, it had plot advancement, and frankly, it is better than most PSVR games, right? When we put it on our ranking list, it's it's better than 50-60% of games just by what I've mentioned. But I often go back to this quote-unquote it factor, that some games have it, like Battlezone. We... It, Battle Zone has it. Like, it is just fun to freaking play. And Retropolis 2 just doesn't have that. It almost felt like a, it felt like a chore to go and play. And certainly this is a personal preference, right? But if you like mystery and puzzle games, you might find the things, the fact that it's not exhilarating to play or it's not action-packed and you want more of a point-and-click game... That may be fine, but it's something for me I had a hard time truly enjoying and looking forward to play and finish. And because of that, on the single count of get off, I find you guilty. I'm, 
I don't know how to. Yeah, it <laughs> it sounded like you were really liking it, and now you're saying you didn't feel you didn't look forward to playing it or weren't excited to play it. So now I'm, I'm confused, Adam. Why don't you just why don't you just bring it home for us and give us your final evaluation? Well, with all the evidence tabulated on this case and on the final count of whether you, Retropolis 2, Never Say Goodbye, is a worthy game to purchase, I find you. Should be no surprise. It's hung. It's hung. And it's hung so. because yeah. the game itself is executed, you know, well, and it it works well. There's no glitches. It's not broken. I think they executed on their vision, but the lack of originality, the fact that it's just not like fun to play, like even puzzling places isn't fun necessarily to play. But as you put things together and you get close to the end of that puzzle and you put the last piece in, there's like that sense of reward. Retropolis 2 just doesn't, it doesn't have any of those pieces. So. I, that's why I can't like I can't guarantee it to everybody. But if you like mysteries and maybe you're up for a little slower paced game and a little bit of puzzles, I think you would be fine paying that twenty five dollars, getting a good amount of time out of it. I think you would like it, Alex. I don't think you would finish it, but I think it would be one of these games that you're like, yeah, I like it, which obviously is a pretty low bar, but still, yeah, that that's where I stand with Retropolis too. <laughs> you're qualified of course i'm not gonna finish it adam was the last game i finished oh it was infinite insides it took like an hour and a half i finished yeah. that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh so uh i think next segment i'm afraid we're gonna run out of time next segment i'm gonna put it on our list also i don't have our list up so i, I got it pulled up here well i don't i need to see it okay. so anyhow let's move on very quickly to fan shout outs yep. and then we're gonna get to the tom telfer play of the week which I forget. Yeah. Fan shout outs. Our boy Killa Sam just said the boys are back. Yeah, it, it was slow going. Adam and I were busy, so it was a while before we could make something and publish it. Um, but we are back and we got a whole other console now that we can talk about too. Thank you, Tom Tell for the for the uh information there. But yes, the boys are back. The, the men boys are, are back. back in town. The boys are back in town. Yeah. And then uh B Green 999. Uh are you fellows on another date? Yeah, we were. Yeah, in LA together. You jelly? It sounds like somebody is jealous. <laughs> and then Gr Grim Gnarly laid into <laughs> laid into Adam for his gym girl update. Which, by the way, if you haven't listened to the last episode, me and Adam in LA talking to each other, uh, the gym girl update I think is one of the highlights of our podcast. That's my favorite. It, it's not. This guy's an idiot. But it's my favorite conversation we've ever had. It is so. You read, read his email. He sent us an email. Thank you, Grim Gnarly. Did yeah, you... he said I removed the cancerous ginger pedo one by poking a hole. Uh, I, I can't see the whole thing here. By poking a hole through his face, and kept the almost handsome, smart sounding, and very well fed one. In future podcasts, you must record the grunts and sputters of the ginger pedo. Please record it on the left stereo channel, as that's where my waxy buildup uh, is in my ear. Placing bets if there will be a PSVR 3. Uh, so, well, first of all, thank you, but I'm, I'm not ginger. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I, love, I love how he calls you ginger pedo. And you're defensive. I'm not ginger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point. I should, I'm not a pedo. I'm not being... good, point. good point. Oh, but it didn't make any sense. Like I've never even been rem I'm not even remotely close to ginger. <laughs> so, um and listen, if there is a PS3, PSVR three, um well let's just get into the master debater next segment and then you know I think you'll know. I'll I'll give you a little clue on if I think there's gonna be a PSVR three. I mean I think there I uh, I don't know. Shoot, that's a tough call. Yeah, all right. We can talk after the masturbator if there's going to be a PSVR 3. That sounds good. I, I'll collect my thoughts on it. So this brings us to the Tom Telfer play of the week. That's it, baby. It's got to be the one, the only Battle Zone Gold Edition. Alex, this is... I, I miss this game. This game is a, is a gem. Yeah, and it, it's hard to explain, too. Watching the footage doesn't look that special. Even, like, the game mechanics don't feel like... There's nothing great about it in VR, 
But you and I played it. It's the first game we played really on the P- PCVR with PSVR two, and it just it felt good to be back. It felt like coming home. You know, it's such a wonderful multiplayer game, and I just. The biggest downside is like it's not popular enough to warrant a sequel. It's not popular enough to generate more content, but it's it's so good. It's so fun. Um, and there's like variety all over with all the different enemy types and stuff. It's just it's an amazing game. And anybody who's got a PC VR now or playing PC VR and has a PSVR 2, if you didn't play PSVR 1, Battlezone was there. Well, now you can play it on the PC. It looks really good. I, I guess all the 4K updates and stuff they did for Battlezone Go to Gold Edition carried across to the VR version um, on PC. But it it looks um, it looks the way I remember it looking in like a good way. That like not my nostalgia messing it up, but instead like it's it's crisp and refined with like modern sensibilities. Yeah. What did you think, Adam? How did it feel? Yeah. It, it we were talking about it a little last night. It's wild that the. If I'm being honest, and we are ranking every VR game, the original launch title for the PSVR Battlezone would be in my top five. It would probably be like five or four. But it's wild how that game just accentuates the best things about virtual reality. You are in the tank. You're engaged constantly. It has appropriate challenge. It brings forth the cooperation and teamwork. It isn't so stressful that, like, um, there is a, like, crossfire. There are times that, Alex, you and I are playing, (laughs) and we have to focus on not dying so much. We're like, we don't talk. But Battlezone, you can have a constant conversation, and you can laugh and have a good time while still being engaged but not being overwhelmed. It's just people hanging out being a team and it, it's freaking fun. Like that's just all there is to it straight up. Yeah. And then you get jerks like Q4. What's his name? Q420 hopping in. Yeah. And, and wrecking things and then leaving. Yeah. Of course he left. At he least we go in, use all of our lives and then bounce because that's <laughs> actually hilarious. And I can't believe we won. Alex is horrible at this game because he just one only goes after the money. And two, just burns through lives because he doesn't want to wait 20 seconds for someone to save him. So normally we lose, but, you know, uh, we did a short normal yesterday. We won. Maybe it's time to go to normal long. <laughs> I gave your mom a short normal last night. No, it's uh, <laughs> the, uh, the thing about Battlezone on the PC is I couldn't get the controller to work. I tried to use DualSense plugged in. I could not for the life of me figure out how to get it to recognize my DualSense. Um, beyond like at the very beginning, it, it it knew that I was moving a analog stick around and that was it. Fortunately, you can use mouse and keyboard as the input. That worked really well. That worked just fine for me. Um, I'm, I'm going to try testing out later tonight with another controller and see if that works a bit better. But yeah, mouse and keyboard work great if you can kind of remember where your fingers are on the keyboard, but it's just such a fun experience. We we implore any of the listeners that that has Battlezone on PC uh to play with us. It, you know, send us an email. We'll be we'll be your Steam buddies and we'll play Battlezone with you. We should Do just start recording more the... codes. Uh I yeah, I think we had a code to give away and they didn't want it because they already had it, I think. Um so I think we have one code to give away. Oh really? Email I us if we... you want to. I forgot how many you gave out. I know you bought some at like two dollars each, and you're like, "I'm just gonna give them away." Yeah, yeah. So if you want, if you want a battle zone code, email us. I'll see if I still have one lying around that I can give you. Contact at playpsvr.com. There it is. Contact at playpsvr.com. Well, I'm just. I was just gonna give them your cell phone number, Adam, so they could just call you. Do it. Do it. All right, Adam. Let's close it out so we can get back into segment two. So thank you, Adam, for your review. Thank you, listeners, for enduring Adam's horrible juice i hope this uh hope this double dose of a uh, smirnoff vodka blueberry sets in and adam's really off his rocker in the next segment of course he's going to be off his rocker because in segment two when we come back we'll be doing our master debater on the pc psvr2 setup
All right, welcome back to segment two of Play PSVR 2, the podcast. Or is it, Adam, is it Play PCVR, the podcast now? Is that what we're going to be doing now that we can connect to PCVR? What do you think? Uh, it better not be. It's not going to be great. It's not going to be great. Okay, not to bury the lead, we're going to do a master debater. That's right. It's going to be me and Adam going toe-to-toe on whether or not the PC adapter for PSVR is a slap in the face for current PSVR users. Um, Adam, I guess you have an opening statement. You're ready. You said you're raring to go in this. I'm. I'm just going to play jazz on this one. I know exactly how I feel about uh, the PSVR and PCVR. But yeah, let, let's get this master debater kicked off, Adam. What's well, your argument? Is, yeah, it's going to be a master debater slash airing a grievance. I think by the time I'm done with it, because it's it's about ready to go down. And because of that, I got a segment two gamer juice. It's called exposed. You are going to get exposed. And Sony, you are going to get exposed, you freaking piece of effing junk, with the purchase of a console and a new headset I was promised I am going to have what is going to be the best VR experience possible. Were we not, Alex? And I was excited. I dropped $500 on the PS5. I dropped $500 on the headset happily. No problem. Only to be massively boned a year and a half later to when Sony, the PlayStation, says, eh, actually, I don't think we're going to drive that initiative anymore. If you want to get the full potential out of this product that you you paid and we promised you, now you're going to have to get you're going to have to use a PC. So I, a follower, a devouted podcaster, paid five hundred dollars for the headset. I paid five hundred dollars for the console. I paid what could be a thousand dollars for the computer. Granted, I bought that two years ago. It's probably a little cheaper now, but a lot of money for a computer. I paid sixty dollars for the adapter. I paid $10 for the display port cord. I paid $10 for the Bluetooth adapter. Apparently, you need potentially a Bluetooth adapter dongle extender so it's not too close to your other freaking computer and other things to make it work. But I did it only to within two days to have wasted over four hours of my life, and it still won't work. And you know what? I know what you're going to say, Alex. Oh, well, that's a PC problem. That's not PlayStation. They did a good thing for us. It became Sony's problem when they won't support their freaking headset, and they make us use the effing computer. So now Windows problems, PC's problems, and Steam's problems are now your problem, Sony, and you, F you, you big effing douchebags. And remember, all of this, we have to do all of this just to get what you promised us two Februarys ago of, hey, to get the experience that we told you, the best VR experience possible, this is now what you have to do. It is a major punt and a middle finger to the people who have already bought the headset and who have supported them. F you. That's point number one. Two two things to that. Um, First of all, I'd like to see what promise you think they made that they haven't delivered on. Now, the PC VR works, but nowhere does Sony say that, like, this is the best way to do VR. They still think that the best way to do VR is on their headset, where you can play Resident Evil 8, you can play Resident Evil 4 VR, you can play Gran Turismo 7, you can play No Man's Sky with the best fidelity you can get anywhere in a VR experience, including eye-tracked, foveated rendering, Dual, you know, haptics, trigger haptics, head haptics, all of the fancy, beautiful, great stuff exists on the PSVR 2, on the PS5. So for somewhere along the line, you thought that they didn't deliver that promise. They did, and they continue to deliver it, and they continue to use the technology. It's just not at the rate that you want. I don't know if you follow much gaming news, Adam. The whole entire gaming ecosystem is in a downswing. People are getting fired left and right. Sony just closed Bungie Studios, yet they don't seem to have closed all of their VR studios. They closed Sony London Games that has made one game in the past 20 years. Um, So this idea that Sony is abandoning VR by making a PC VR doesn't quite make sense. But really, the the fact of the matter is, Sony never said that you were going to be playing 
PSVR 2 on the PC. Sony told you exactly what they what they were going to give you, and they gave us exactly that. And you are the one who's, you know, seems to have not been, feel like you haven't had your promise given to you. My other point, Adam, is it sounds like you're the kind of guy, you go to a restaurant, it's called Fantastic Steakhouse is what we'll say. And they walk in there and say, we promise we're going to give you a fantastic steak. And they give you a fantastic steak. And you eat that fantastic steak. And you say, that was a fantastic steak. And then they come along to the side and say, hey, did you leave room for dessert? You know, we got some cheesecake. Here's some cheesecake. And you eat the cheesecake. Or they say, give you cheesecake for three bucks. And you pay $3 to get the cheesecake. And then you walk out of the restaurant and say, damn it! That cheesecake wasn't fantastic! They promised me fantastic food. No, they promised you a fantastic steak. You didn't even have to eat the cheesecake. You don't have to buy PC VR, Adam. You can still play these damn games. But Sony never said they were going to let us play PSVR 2 on PC. And then people asked for it. The IVRY guys that were making their own adapter were going to charge 200 bucks for the adapter. And people were already ready to buy it. Sony realized, hey, obviously people want to do this. Let's just release an adapter and make this work. Apparently they've been thinking about it a long time anyways. So I don't know. I'm, I'm so confused by your complaint because you're complaining about a good thing happening for a very small price not being good enough. When it's still, we, we we played Battlezone last night and had a great time. It's it's like, would you pay 60 bucks to play an upgraded, remastered, better version of Battlezone on a PSVR 2 headset? You would undoubtedly say yes. Well, that's effectively what you've done. I would do it on the console without me having to buy additional stuff. And ultimately, I can't even get it to work, Alex. But anyhow... We played it last night, you idiot! You had to use a mouse and keyboard! That's fine. We played the game last night. You used a controller. You had an uncompromised experience playing no, games. Oh, you F you. You know it was compromised. It took us a long time to get it playable. And the, the $60... You, that was the cost is done. You've bought all the stuff now. Any game you have on Steam VR, which I bought you Battlezone for two bucks. These games are amazing and cheap, and somehow it's still not good enough for you. It's, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. And by having this thing on the PC, here's what I think is going to happen. Number one, if you are a developer, and I I don't blame developers whatsoever. If I am developing a game. Am I going to develop it specifically for the PSVR and the PS5 and take full potential of the headset on that? Or am I going to be use a better resource of my time and my money and my engineers and just develop it on Steam and know that probably the majority of the people with PSVR 2s that are serious that would have bought my game anyhow have the adapter and they'll just buy it on Steam. They're probably going to do that, right? I would if I were a developer. I think that uh, we're going to see less games on the PS5. Now, maybe it's going to be a bunch of games we didn't really like care for anyhow, but I think we're going to see less games. And the reason that matters is, number one, this system that you're talking about is freaking atrocious. It's painful to use, and I'd rather stick my dick in a blender than use it. I cannot even get it to work, and I bought all this extra stuff, and again, I'm not the only one struggling with it. If I... It's not going to use the, the headset and the controllers to its full potential. Again, backtracking, albeit indirectly by Sony, what was promised is when I bought this console and I bought this headset at the time that I'm going to open up a whole world of this is the best experience. And now I feel robbed of that. You're right. Maybe you would argue the PS5 maybe still is the best experience. I don't know. But the fact that now I have an unlimited number of games and Sony can go back and be like, oh, uh, we don't need to develop anymore because you got everything you want on freaking Steam. Here's the thing, Alex. Remember that Half-Life Alex didn't come to PSVR. PSVR went to Half-Life Alex. That is a big freaking difference. To me, that's a big deal. And I think that's really effing telling. Number two, this is 
I mean, it's already caused headaches for the owners. And I'm not talking about the headset is so freaking uncomfortable, you can't wear it more than 45 seconds without having a freaking actual headache. I'm talking about, I had to rearrange my whole entire effing room at Borderline House. I thought I'd be playing VR in the freaking living room. So I set that up to play effing VR and I had it great. Now, guess what? My computer's in my room, had to move my bed, move the furniture, set up this whole thing. It's still certainly not ideal. If it were any more comp, well, I would say maybe it's not ideal. I don't know because I can't freaking it up and use it. Here's the thing. I spend 20 minutes trying to connect to the freaking Bluetooth. It won't work because it's a piece of crap. Steam and Windows and the Sony app, they don't work well together. I have to physically connect my controllers to even get something to work, which I guess that's just how I'm going to have to do it. But, of course, it's supposed to be virtual reality, Alex. Well, guess what? I can't move more than a foot and a half from my freaking computer, my CPU now, so my range of motion on my arms is this. I have a more range of motion when your mom's laying on me. That's bull crap. That's real virtual reality. Very nice. Oh, and guess what? You want to use your dual sense? Too bad. Impossible. All right. You want to actually use Bluetooth with your sense controllers? Oh, nope. Impossible. Oh, you want to adjust your Steam settings while you're in the middle of a VR game? Wrong. Impossible. Well, not impossible. Virtually impossible. We saw that yesterday, Alex. You can't even use the sense to play Battlezone. You got to use a freaking mouse and a freaking keyboard. I swear. I... They are making us choose, are you going to have the best experience or are you going to have the easiest experience? And here's the thing, Alex. You ready? If they have a PSVR 3, Sony has ruined this podcast. They will play PSVR the podcast. They ruined it. Because if there is going to be a PSVR 3, unless something dramatically changes, I'm not buying it. And they ruined the podcast. You're bringing somebody in? You need, are you bringing in backup, Adam? Is that what this is? First of all, he doesn't need backup. Alex, grab your ankle, son, because just like last Saturday, your auntie... Flip yourself around, you old know, man, all right? Along. <laughs> this is a big mistake. Sony has taken a dump on both the PC market and the PlayStation market. You're just so wrong on this, man. I don't even know what the show's been about, but I just had a feeling something dumb was going down and you were behind it. <laughs> All right, I'll fight both of you guys. I got two hands. One, Adam at the top, he, he made his argument succinctly, and it, it shows you how misguided it is. Adam at, at the top says, I was robbed. Adam is a type of guy who, when given something, feels like something was taken away from him. It, but because he's got this weird construct in his mind that he's owed something for no reason, even though nobody ever promised it to him. Adam willingly paid the $60 for the PC adapter and somehow thinks he was robbed of something from the PSVR 2, PS5 library. There's I was no robbed evidence. of my time and the games I'm not going to be able to play because they're never going to take Half-Life to the dang PSVR now. And I'm going to return the effing adapter and then get my 60 bucks back. And then say, you know what, Sony? How about that? They robbed me. <laughs> you can't get, you can't force Val to publish Half Life Alex on the PSVR. I'm just trying to figure out where you're finding value in this thing. Yeah, it's kind of cheap at 60 bucks. I'll give you that. But you got to come up with another cord. There's, I'm seeing nothing but issues out there because people are struggling with the Bluetooth and pairing controllers because they weren't smart enough to put in a Bluetooth adapter. You know, and, and, and that's before, you know, you got to do the, the driver thing to up, update your Bluetooth um, so your, your PCs are more compatible with it. But that's why PlayStation owners want it to play on PlayStation so we didn't yeah. have to deal with this kind of crap. Yeah, but there's people who want to play PC VR games. One of the big one of the big advantages when people said, oh, should I get a Quest or a PC or get a Quest or a PSVR 2? 
the response was, well, Quest is wireless and you can play the Quest games, but hey, you also, you can connect to the PC and play the good games like Half-Life Alex. Guess what? Now that is possible on PS2. I know because I got the adapter yesterday and I played Half-Life Alex today. You want to know where I'm getting the value? I'm getting the value from a medieval VR. I'm getting the value from Outer Wilds. I'm getting the value from Half-Life 2 VR. Getting the value from all of these games, actually a full version of Project Wingman completely in VR. It's not just the officially licensed games. It's the limitless mods that are coming out. Dark Souls remastered in VR. You get the mods. This is 60 bucks to open up a thousand-fold library of VR possibilities if you're willing to do a little bit of legwork, which every PC gamer is willing to do. Hey, Alex, one question. Didn't you already own a Quest 2? I did own a Quest 2. It's a pain in the ass to so, set up. No, 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 hold on. So you could already do all this stuff. You I could just already do all me an additional 60 bucks just so you could have better black levels. No, this, so the Quest 2, horribly uncomfortable. I even got the Bobo VR BS and I can play it and it counterbalances way. It's horribly uncomfortable. You're my home Wi-Fi. I do the best I can to make it work. It's not the best, unless you want to, you want to connect you know, Ethernet, you actually can't connect Ethernet. If you don't want to have compression when you're playing Half-Life Alex, you need to use a high-fidelity cable. Now, you guys talk about the display port as if it's some obscure thing. Anybody who's built a PC in the past five years knows display, display port is how you output video from a PC GPU. So I don't get where you guys are coming from. Like, oh, I can't find a display port cable. Like I said, every monitor I've bought in the past five years has given me two display port cables. I'm not I bought, saying I bought many. It uh, here's should have been included. So it's you don't right. feel like the people like Shafe who don't want to drop a grand or eight hundred dollars on a computer, they shouldn't feel robbed by the fact that they are being forced to to get the most out of their headset. They're being forced to buy that stuff to get the most out of it. Because you say, oh, you're, you're, you're not, you can still get your full potential on, on the PlayStation and the PS5. You can't. Because the games you want to play that they are no longer going to bring... There's is no that evidence of that. There's no evidence of that. As a matter of fact, Dungeons of Eternity just got announced for PSVR 2. That was a game that was on PC. It just got announced for PSVR 2. It probably was in development before this even happened. How no much wonder Half-Life is coming to PS5? Half-Life Alex is not coming to... It's never coming to PSVR 2. Valve doesn't Wait, want to develop Chief it. will that. never get to play it. He bought the freaking headset in the console day one, not thinking Half-Life Alex. But well, then what's your point? Then what's your point? He that, didn't buy it thinking he's going to play Half-Life Alex. What's your point? Because he bought that to get the overall best experience possible. If he knew that he's going to have to buy a freaking PC and a headset and just go with Valve. Sony themselves, PlayStation. That, Sony themselves says that play, says that the PC VR is not the best experience possible. They don't have the eye track field reader entering. They don't have HDR. They don't have, you know, the rumble, the special haptics and stuff like that. If you want the best VR experience, yeah, you're going to get that on the PS5 with the PSVR 2 in the games like Resident Evil 8, Resident Evil 4. And now, now you might have a point at some point if six months down the road we start seeing games developed on PC VR, that would be great candidates for PSVR 2, and they're just not getting ported over. But right now, based on what we see coming out, talking about Metro, talking about Alien, talking about Wanderer, talking about Dungeons of Eternity, we're not seeing that play out. We're seeing games still get released for PSVR 2. So you have no evidence. I promise you it's going to happen, because how many games do we play and we review, Alex, and we're like, they don't use the PSVR 2 headset, it's just like a Quest game. That's already happened. And that's not Sony's fault. That's just how it is. Now the developers have an even better reason to not make it for the PSVR 2. They ruined their own headset and technology. If we see if we see a decrease in PSVR 2 games coming out, but see a, a corollary increase of PC VR games coming out, you might have a point, but I will tell you that the PC VR, there's a lot of PC VR gamers, but when you release a game on the PC, you're competing against AAA, high quality flat games that are getting modded into VR. That's what people on PC VR are wanting to play. So by saying, I'm just going to make this game for the PC VR, they're actually making a horrible business decision because the user base, the install base is either going to be on the Quest, so they got to make a cell phone VR game, or it's going to be on the it's going to be on the PS5, PSVR 2 system. Those are the two user bases you could develop for. PC VR, it's not 
a real moneymaker, as seen by the guys who made Legendary Tales. They're not making their money back because they made a game for PC and PSVR 2, and they aren't able to get it on the Quest. PC is not making the money on the development form. It's been all PSVR 2. Yeah, but all those games you just mentioned a, min a minute ago, your, your Wanderer, your Dungeons of Eternity, um, yeah. whatever else you rambled on, um, those are all already on Quest or coming to Quest as well. So... It's, is Metro coming to Quest? No, my point yeah. is that it, no, Adam's point is that you're going to see games released everywhere else except for PSVR because people could just play it on the PC instead. And I'm saying that's not the case. These games are coming to PSVR too, as well as PC. As but well, are as they PC. optimized? I don't care yes. if it's on the PlayStation Store, but if it doesn't have the the freaking all the haptics and the head rumble yeah. and all that crap. And I, I don't know. Maybe they be do. optimized because they're not out. But Wander is definitely going to be optimized. That's one of that's like a PSVR two flagship game. Yeah, and that's my PSVR two swan song at this point. The reason I think Adam's so upset is nothing is specifically being developed solely for PSVR two. That that's we know the of. They. So uh, according according to the insiders, and God knows who they are, even if they can be trusted, there's two PSVR2 exclusives in development. I didn't even mention Behemoth. Oh, my goodness. Okay, there's so many great games coming out, like, in the next year. But those were I already can't... before this adapter thing was going to happen. They've been in the works. I'll think, gladly take do, them, you know. Do you guys think that the, the developers didn't know this adapter was going to come out until we did? I, I wouldn't be know. surprised if they didn't because there's no way in hell this was originally developed for PC support way back at the launch, like they've tried to claim. There's no way. I'm not saying at the launch. launch. I'm not saying at the launch. But these, no, there's but, no way these guys didn't know until just now that there was going to be PC. It's support only been out for a year and a half. Right. How long do you think it takes to make a game? Yeah, but but Sony has gone on record as saying that PSVR two was always planned for PC release. If that was the case. All those wonderful features that make it exceptional for PS PS5 would be available on PC. It just would be, so they could give everyone the best there's, experience possible. There's two reasons. There's two reasons why you wouldn't do that. One, there's no games on the PC. No games developed for PC VR are looking at high eye track foveated rendering. No games on PC VR are developed in, intending to use head haptics or the the haptics that the PS VR controller uses because no other headset has that capability except for maybe the Quest Pro has a bit of eye tracking, right? But none of the other headsets had that capability. The other reason is that Sony, of course, PlayStation 5 is their console of choice. They want the best VR experience to exist on the PlayStation 5. So it behooves them, if there's going to be a game released on PC VR and PSVR 2, they want the PSVR 2 version to be better in ways that other than just stability. So it behooves them to say, hey, let's make sure the best version of this game is on the PSVR 2, on the PS5. But if you have it on PC, sure, go for it that way. Yeah, but but if that was their line of thought, um, don't you think they would have advertised it? Would have advertised what? The PSVR 2. They would have pushed it. They would have marketed it harder as the best place to get the best VR experiences. And so they you're did. So now you're trying to take this argument into some of the things like, what is Sony's marketing strategy? I'm, I'm I don't just, know what Sony's marketing strategy I'm just is. countering the point you're trying to make. You know, that it, doesn't it's counter on paper that so, uh, Sony had this 2,352% increase in sales. All that tells me is they finally sold 2,352 headsets that were sitting in a closet somewhere. Nobody was buying them because Sony wasn't marketing it, wasn't pushing it, and wasn't making exclusive games for it. I don't think I don't think the marketing is the issue with what it, 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 your argument is they should have developed HDR and eye tracking stuff for PC VR. And the reason I don't even I don't even know how that marketing comes in to counteract that argument. No, my my point on the, the HDR and the phobia rendering was if they were truly making this with plans to release it on the PC down the road, those features would be made available. Because what, if what? developers no, but because if developers knew those features were going to be available, they would have put them in their games. So now that that would be Sony making it easier for people to do exactly what Adam's scared they're going to do and make a game just on PC VR and not on PSVR two. So in that sense, if Sony did include those features in the PSVR two headset, then Adam would have a case and say, you know what? 
all the best stuff is just going to be on PC. There's no point to have a PS5 anymore. But no, Sony has still made it to where if you like, if you have a PSVR 2 headset and you like playing PSVR or you like playing VR games, there's a reason to have a PS5. You're going to get the best experience on the PS5, even though you could play the same game on the PC. Now, now you guys, you're sandwiching me here on the Zoom call. You're arguing against each other inadvertently, not realizing it. I'm just a funnel of logic to make sure that what you guys say makes sense between each other, but you're still falling apart here. It's a hey. cheap peripheral. It's a cheap... You, okay, listen, no. Let, let's take this back. Let's use gaming history as an example. Super Nintendo came out. Everybody loved playing Super Nintendo. Then they made the Super Game Boy. Did people argue and say, I'm getting robbed of my Super Nintendo promise because I can play Game Boy games on my Super NES now? No. Everybody loved it. Everybody, it was, This is the exact same damn thing. It's this not. Is, yeah, it's different totally. You can't play cheap, the same stuff on Super this, Nintendo as you can Super Game Boy. This is a cheap peripheral you can buy for your VR2 headset to expand the library and play different games on a different console. That's what this is. And you're somehow thinking this means that the PS5 on PSVR 2 is dead. Maybe it is, but we don't have evidence of that because we already have, I already have a backlog of games that haven't been released because they're going to be released in such a case where I'm never going to be able to catch up and play them as they come out. How a peripheral is something that you buy and use with that item, not you buy and have to use with a more expensive item. That's not a peripheral. That's just like a... The, oh. the PSVR 2 adapter is a peripheral to the PSVR 2, Adam. But you need the freaking PC, which is a, a separate whole thing. <laughs> of course, you no, it's a, it's a peripheral to the PSVR 2. That's, that, I'm not saying anything about the, it's, the PSVR 2 plays games on its own or something like that. This is a peripheral to the PSVR 2. But to it's expand, different than the Super the Game Boy, where you just bought it, you put it in the Super Nintendo, and you're good to go. Yeah, and I buy this adapter, and I plug it into my PC, and I'm more or less good to go. Well, you got to buy the PC, which is freaking expensive. If you already have it, I, I want to I meet the person who bought the PSVR 2 adapter and didn't have a PC. He said, what if they can play games on it? No, of course you know you plug it into that damn okay. PC, you idiot. See, my thing here, too, if you bought the PC PSVR 2 with the intention of using it on the PC... I don't think there's really... I think that's fine. That's no issue. I'm upset of the people who bought it initially. I don't understand how you don't see how we feel robbed. Like, Well, Shafe didn't even buy it, so there, there's that. But, so but he, I, feel, I don't what? have a PC that can run solitaire, let alone VR. And the thing is, he's robbed because... He doesn't want to spend $1,000 on a computer, but he spent $1,000 on Sony equipment thinking that was good enough. And it's how now he, no longer good enough. How has he been robbed? Enough. What evidence is there that you're not getting the promised experience from Sony for the PSVR 2? It, may, it sounds like the issue is you guys have a... a you know, your your tastes aren't being met. I have a wealth of games of PSVR 2. I have too many games to play on PSVR 2. And now I have, you know, exponentially more games to play on the PC VR. But they're not, not exclusives. Like Sony, they're Quest games. They just happen to be on, the, on PlayStation Store too. You don't have to play the PC VR. You don't have to have PC VR to get the experience that we all expected to get when we bought a PSVR 2 on the PS5. I expected more games on the PSVR 2. Well, you just won't play half the You're like Adam. You won't play half the game. Actually, you play more games than Adam does. But it's... Oh, so what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I... Summer Lesson. Don't give us hey, that crap. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Shave, Shave was There's one of the most nothing prolific. like Summer Lesson on PSVR 2. You've got to admit that. Actually, I think there might be. I haven't... I had... There's one of the... Some Japanese game that costs like 60 bucks. But uh, we just... I just want to remaster Summer Lesson. Yeah. I mean, I, I think really looking at the libraries now... Given what the library is on the PSVR 2 versus the PSVR 1, the PSVR 1's library was more impressive. I think potentially it was more impressive. The games were harder to play because the, the controllers were so much the, worse. The, the controllers were jank, but the variety and the experiences were just all over the place and they were great, except for like crap games like Stunt Kite Master or to the top, you know. Hold your, hold your tongue. Like hold your tongue. How, much, how much more fun did we have on the PSVR than PSVR 2? Be honest, Alex. I lived a different life when the PSVR came out, first of all. So, like, I can play games with you a lot more. Um, 
I'm, I'm much busier now. So we could play games. That, like, if you just like an overall amount of fun. Yeah, that, is, that, that is such bull crap. We didn't like, play it. till 1230 at night with the PSVR 2. So here's the here's the thing is, I think the symptom you're describing, Shave Dog, and, and the, the quality and types of games, I think what we're seeing is an overall degradation of the, the game platform. And maybe, maybe degradation is not the best word. Maybe consolidation of game design mechanics because we're seeing things like the quest and when you want to make a game to in vr you need to make sure you cater to as many people as possible and so you see games being held on the quest and even games that come to psvr2 have this quest tax associated with them and so I, I you see the same thing when you were looking at um shoot what was it when it was like the wii and the 360 and the ps3 you'd sometimes see games that they develop and you would you could see that there were corners cut because they had to get this game on the Wii as well. You see it now with the Switch, too. The games come out, but they have to cut corners so they can get it on the Switch so they can really make some money back with that, that huge platform. I think when the PSVR 1 came out, it was basically PSVR, and it was like PC VR, and that was it. And so you saw people doing weird experimental things and trying things out, but now people are kind of falling lazily into pre-built mechanics, pre, uh, you know, pre-determined methods of doing things in games. And we're seeing over a bit lazier game design. But when people do have the wherewithal and the power and a little bit of the funding, you can see amazing stuff like Synapse come out on PSVR 2. So I don't and think guess it's what? Necessarily... It was an exclusive. Those are the games that, yeah, okay, maybe we have like four of them, but we aren't getting because it's going to PC. We need to move on. Shafe, do you think there's going to be a PSVR 3? What are you thinking? Um, you want a percentage chance? Whatever you want to give me. Yeah, snowball's chance in hell. No. Wow, really? No. How they come? Are pulling away hard from the VR market. Wow. He he says that as they just showed off a new headset that they released. You you mean the one that they're making for medical use? Come I'm on. just saying, you say they're pulling away from the VR market as they release a new headset, regardless of who the audience is, they Consumer release a new headset. level gaming headset, no. Okay, this is the Mott Bailey where he has a strong argument up front and he's got to dial it back. To oh, the, the okay, so argument. what? Do you think they're going to have one, Alex? Yeah, I think Sony's got a lot of investment here. They have do you a lot think of it's going to be a, a PC headset that works on PlayStation? Or do you think it's going to be a PlayStation headset that you can have an adapter and maybe use it on PC VR? I, I think... I, I'd imagine what they're going to do is probably be pushing for a standalone headset. It's probably going to have streaming capability with a PlayStation 6, maybe also a PC. Sony's looking, they've been looking into the streaming stuff for a while. They've tested the waters with the PlayStation portal. So I think we're going to be looking at a wireless headset that's going to be streaming. It's probably going to not come out until like two years after the PS, uh, PS6 or whatever, if that even ever comes out. So yeah, I think there's going to be another, there's going to be another PlayStation branded VR headset in the future. I don't think Sony's lost money on this. Um, if they have lost money, I don't think it's too much, and I think they want to keep their foothold in the in the uh, keep their foot in the door. They're not pulling an Apple releasing a four thousand dollar headset that totally bombs after two months. So we're doing better than that. So I, I, it's an ecosystem that obviously has room to mature and grow, um, especially as other more uh, traditional gaming platforms and mediums are kind of faltering out or at least flatlining in terms of how much they can grow. You know, of, of course, Sony's made money on, on, on VR. They just got another 60 bucks out of you. So, I mean, it's easy money. But to say, but, but to, but to Adam's argument, but to Adam's argument, then if that's the case, Sony just lost a ton of money because I'm never going to buy a game on the PS5 again because it's on the PC already. No, you would if they made an exclusive. If And, and that would maybe fit in the Chase argument that if there isn't going to be a new headset, they're just trying to sell these things. They know they can sell them to the PC. And maybe they'll make a headset, but it won't be... I, I guess before... I'm not going to buy one unless it's obviously focused on PlayStation. If there's anything to do with the PC, I'm not buying it. Because I do I not believe... I don't, I don't believe that people are going to... And I could be wrong. I don't think they're going to develop games specifically for PS5. Why would you? It, it's not a smart use of resources for the small games, the developers that we have on our podcast, Alex. It just it's, doesn't make sense for them to add all of that in. The audience isn't there. It's Adam, your argument's like, what if you bought a new a new car and you found out that this car can also drive off-road? Now suddenly you're mad. 
Because, ah, I just want to drive on the road. They robbed me because my car can now drive off-road as well. This is this is what's happening. You just expend your library for 60 bucks. You can't get a better deal than that in anywhere in the gaming space. And you're upset. It's, it blow, okay, I've made my point. Honestly, what this feels like, I'm glad both of you guys were on here. It's like back in the day when I used to play Goldeneye, License to Kill, and it would be me versus my two friends, and I'd be killing both my friends because there was more guys to take out. You guys are dropping stupid arguments left and right. I got more to counteract. This is great. We should do this again sometime where both of you guys make say stupid stuff and I fight back on it. Hey, let me ask you one question. Would it have been smarter if PlayStation had approached um, uh, Val Steam? and valve and made some sort of arrangement to put a uh steam store and a, a you know a steam link on the ps5 we're talking so a we software just... app and, and then the pc games through a, a steam link through a steam store on the playstation 5 so you have to stream from your pc to the playstation 5 no 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 no, no. let this playstation 5 do all the streaming you're That's talking what I'm about saying. A, a store app you're not going through a PC. You don't need a PC. You only yeah. use so how the would PlayStation. You, so how would you play the games? What would be running it? Steam the Link is to connect your is to connect your console to, or to connect something to your PC. What would this no, Steam no, no, Link no, no. be doing? I'm not not necessarily Steam Link, but a web portal to use to buy Steam games yeah. on the PS5 and play through the PS5. So that would be having to reconfigure the architecture of most of the games and what they're developed on. Even though PlayStation 5, a console, is more or less a powerful computer, the games developed on it are optimized for the hardware of the PS5. I don't see how this would work. So you, you, you would then have to have them port every PC game to the PS5 architecture. Aren't we just talking lower settings? I mean, No, you have it's to, not, it's you not have just to, lower settings. You have to tweak a lot of settings sometimes to play your PC games. Sometimes shaders are causing stuttering, so you got to tweak yeah, those. Yeah, but th yeah. this is a, it's not just a matter of settings, though. Right. But also, with, you would rather put the onus on... The gun was software. And, 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 oh, instead of doing what Shay said, let's put the onus on the people who already paid for the stuff and make you download mods and buy cables and adapters and all this crap and a freaking computer to do it. That's bull crap. Here, guys, we're running out of time, and I enjoyed this. If nothing else, it's a good airing of grievance. I am ticked. I absolutely detest this. I have spent so much time trying to get it to work that I could have finished Half-Life Alex. probably. Actually, I don't know how long the game is, but it, 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 it's frustrating. Uh, I would love to know what the listeners think. I'm sure some are with Alex. Some are probably with me and Shafe. I don't know what to tell you. Alex is all rubed up. Look at him. He's just laughing because he knows he got cooked. And he doesn't know that they, he got cooked on live TV. It's, like, live I, it's like I went to the circuit to watch the freak show with you two. This is insane. I do, I, do I need to pay for this meeting that I've been on? It is. I love ruffling his feathers. His face is red. Look at him. Oh, Does he enjoy gosh. being the meat of the sandwich? Yeah, you're a freaking meat. F you, Sony. You need two CEOs because you've effed up so hard and you've ruined the podcast. Way to go. We are now a house divided. This podcast will never be the same. F you, cuck, Cerny. Also, uh, thanks for listening to Play PSVR 2, the podcast, where virtual realities are reality. Blabber. Blabber. Blabber.